All day long in Cairo, the anticipation and excitement were growing. President Mubarak was going on television, and the anti-government protesters were expecting him to say he was stepping down. He did not. Mubarak said he is staying on as president until the September elections when he promised to transfer power to his successor. In the meantime, he said he is delegating power to his vice president, Omar Suleiman, and he promised to amend the Constitution to make it easier for opposition candidates to run for office. He also made it clear once again he wants other nations to butt out of Egypt's affairs, and he vowed again he will die in Egypt. The stunned crowd in Tahrir Square waved shoes in anger and shouted once again for Mubarak to step down now. Late tonight, Suleiman called on the protesters to go home, but very few are leaving. Our team in Cairo is covering this extremely fluid situation. First, Elizabeth Palmer. Liz, I know it's the middle of the night there. What's going on in Tahrir Square? Good evening, Katie. Well, you can probably see behind me, there are still thousands of people there. The tent city is still in Tahrir Square. People are just trying to absorb what's happened. The president's speech has come and gone, but this crisis is not over by any means. In fact, if anything, it's deepened. In Tahrir Square, they were in a frenzy of expectation. All evening, there have been rumors that President Hosni Mubarak was about to resign. But when he appeared on state television, it was with another half measure. I have seen that it is required to delegate the powers and authorities of the president to the vice president. So he's not going anywhere, though he'll apparently continue as president in name only. But he did make some concessions, setting term limits for the presidency re-establishing judicial oversight of elections and loosening restrictions on who can run. However, he stopped short of lifting the hated state of emergency still in effect after 30 years. The immediate reaction in the square was fury. But Wael Ghanim, the Google executive who helped launch this movement, told CBS News that he, for one, can live with Mubarak's offer. For, for me, like, you know, preserving his dignity would be something I understand. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if the people in, the, in Tahrir Square would connect to, the, to his, uh, 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 you know, to his speech. I hope, I hope they would. However, anger in the square intensified when the vice president went on television and told the demonstrators it was time to go home. The wild card now is the army, which has to continue to provide security, a job that was looking increasingly difficult today as demonstrators blockaded parliament once again. And this morning, pressure on the regime was building from striking workers across the country. Railway mechanics staged a sit-in that brought trains in Cairo to a halt, and normally mobbed bus stations were deserted as drivers had walked off the job. As if central Cairo wasn't in enough chaos today with the state bus company on strike, hundreds of lawyers stopped traffic as they marched from their union headquarters to join the demonstrators in Tahrir Square. Thousands of doctors in their white hospital coats had also taken to the streets. Tonight, the question is whether these people whose expectations were so high will accept the president's compromise as good enough or decide to battle on. If they do battle on and defy the vice president, that will be a moment of reckoning for the army. They're going to have to decide then whether they continue to back the protesters or whether they move in to force them off the streets. Katie? And Liz, what if the army does go in? Do you think it's going to be a bloodbath? It could well be. We could see the Egyptian army moving with force against its own people using weapons, some of which were paid for with American tax dollars. Katie? All right. Liz Palmer in Cairo tonight. Liz, thank you. Terry McCarthy was in Tahrir Square early today as word was spreading that Mubarak might be leaving. But when it became clear he wasn't, the mood turned ugly. After 17 days of noisy protests in Tahrir Square, only one man could bring silence. The man they all want to leave. But the message he delivered was not what the crowd wanted to hear. Their verdict was delivered in one Arabic word over and over. Erhal, Erhal. 
leave, leave. They only agree on one thing, which is that they need the President Mubarak to leave. That's the only request that they have now. They don't have any trust in this government, and now in this president. And now he is making people like more having fight together again. The crowd's anger is growing. A very different mood from the optimism of the early evening when they heard the reports that Mubarak was about to make an important speech. It's over. Convinced that Mubarak was leaving, people were dancing in the street, waving flags, holding candles, and getting their faces painted with the colors of the Egyptian flag. This surgeon brought his wife and two daughters to the square for the first time, convinced he would witness history. But today you decided to bring your whole family. Yes. Why was that? To, to celebrate. To celebrate? Yes. As news is spreading around Cairo that Mubarak might be stepping down, people are streaming into the square to join this massive celebration as they wait for an official announcement. But when the announcement came, the celebration stopped replaced by anger and foreboding about a potential violent backlash to the president's speech. As um, an Egyptian, I'm really worried about the, uh, the next period of time. Do you think people are going to go back in the streets tomorrow? Well, they will be in the streets. There will be many people in the streets. <laughs> Minutes after the end of the speech, the crowd began calling for tomorrow's million-man march, determined not to give Mubarak the last word. As the speech was ending and the message became clear, we noticed one quite interesting thing, which was that any family in the crowd with women and children immediately started hurrying for the exits, Katie. And Terry, what was it like to be in the middle of that enormous crowd when the people suddenly realized that Mubarak wasn't resigning after all? Well, it was really quite extraordinary, almost like psychological whiplash, because all evening long this crowd really thought they'd won. But then when it was snatched away from them, their mood turned on a dime. And right now this crowd is probably more angry than it's ever been. Katie? All right. Terry McCarthy in Cairo tonight. Terry, thank you. Mona El Tahawi, who was born in Egypt, is an award-winning columnist and expert on the Middle East. She's been blogging extensively about the uprising. I know you have know scores of people, Mona, who are in Tahrir Square, probably still tonight. What are they saying? What are you hearing from them? Well, they're livid, um, Katie. They're really disappointed because all day long they'd been hearing all these rumors that Mubarak was about to step down, and they wanted to, to celebrate that, but also maintain that they want the entire regime to step down. So when Mubarak came on and said, I'm staying, but I'm also delegating my vice president, they said, we've got two Mubaraks now, not just one Mubarak. So they're very angry, but they're still very determined, and they're vowing to keep it peaceful, and they've now marched onto the TV building where they're calling for more people to come and join them. Meanwhile, it's been so confusing all day long. Long. What do you think is going on behind the scenes? Everyone's trying to figure it out. It's a great question because, you know, President Mubarak took almost 90 minutes to actually finally give the speech. So people were wondering, is it because Egyptians are always late, like we like to say about ourselves, or was there some kind of power struggle going on? People are not clear where the armed forces stand on this because at sometimes they've seemed to be neutral. At other times, they seem to be protecting people against Mubarak's thugs. And other times, by being neutral, they seem to be taking Mubarak's side. So no one really knows where the army stands. So what do you think the army will do if a million you know hundreds of thousands of people protest tomorrow do you think the army will move in well, what I'm hoping as an Egyptian is that you know I was hearing of a few soldiers joining the pro-democracy demonstrations today in their uniforms I'm hoping the armed forces recognizes that this is a time to choose Egypt and not the pride of one man and not a regime that has suffocated the country for 30 years so when they see that determination I'm hoping they say Mubarak it's time to go we're taking the young people's side but doesn't the army stand to lose everything if in fact Mubarak leaves the country I mean, that's a big risk for, for the army, isn't it? The army, I mean, Mubarak is the army, Amr Suleiman is the army, the entire regime is the army. It's, a, it's going to be a very difficult choice. But I hope they recognize that the future of Egypt is at stake because Mubarak wants to tip these peaceful protesters into violence. Today's sadistic speech was a provocation. I'm hoping the armed forces recognizes that this is the country we're talking about. They can figure out the government and who's the transition, but just ensure that people's peaceful demands are met. Why would he want violence? So he can be the hero by quelling it? Absolutely. We've seen 17 days of this beautiful, peaceful, pro-democracy demonstration saying we want freedom and dignity and enough of dictatorship. He wants to push people so that when he cracks down in a, in a bloody way, he can say to the international community, because he knows they're all watching, you see, I had to do it. 
This is a turning point for the region. Young people across the Arab world are watching and they're learning. Does a peaceful demonstration work or is it only violence? Now, these, these dictators who have basically ruined the Arab world want them to understand that only violence works. What's happening in Tahrir Square and across Egypt is a beautiful message for young people and the future of the world that I hope the U.S. administration is listening to. This is the time to take, to take the side of peaceful demonstrators who want freedom. Let me ask you about Wael Ghanem. He's the Google executive who was abducted for 12 days. State-run television in Egypt is announcing that, that he is telling the protesters to go home. In other words, they're using him. What is the real story behind that? You know, this is all part of this great big state-run propaganda that for days has tried to portray the pro-democracy demonstrators as foreign agents, agents from the U.S. and from Israel. And today we heard that in Omar Salimane's speech, this is the vice president that no one in Egypt wants. The U.S. administration must know Egyptians do not want Omar Salimane. And he was saying, don't listen to satellite channels. So this is all part of this scheme to make, to discredit the demonstrators. So what they did was they used this man who's incredibly popular, who's become the youth figurehead. And they, they made it seem like he's calling on people to go home. He was not on Twitter today, but his friends wrote, Wael has not asked anyone to go home. And just before we came on, just before I came on with you, he was on an Arab satellite channel explaining that he didn't think the demands uh, of, the, of the protesters were being met. And, and he, it's clear that he didn't tell anyone to go home. So it's just more propaganda. All right, Mona El Tahawi, thank you so much for coming by and giving us your insight. It's Thanks, really Kate. invaluable. Thank you, Mona. Thank you. Mubarak didn't mention the United States in his address tonight, but it was clear which country he met when he said Egypt won't take orders from anyone. So what does all of this mean for the U.S.? Chip Reed is at the White House tonight, and David Martin is at his post at the Pentagon. Chip, first you, it seems the administration was a bit taken by surprise by the events of the day. That's right, Katie. Today, Leon Panetta, the CIA director, predicted in a congressional committee hearing that there was a, quote, strong likelihood that Mubarak would resign today. It turns out he didn't get that information from intelligence gathered by his agency. He got it from newspaper reports. And when President Obama talked about Egypt briefly in a speech in Michigan today, uh, he also sounded very upbeat and positive about today's events. What is absolutely clear is that we are witnessing history unfold. It's a moment of transformation that's taking place because the people of Egypt are calling for change. The president also said that he wants all Egyptians to know that America will help in any way it can in a peaceful transition to democracy. Katie? And David, earlier today it looked as if Egypt's military might take over, that there might be some kind of coup. What happened? Do you have any idea? Well, essentially, they decided to stick with Mubarak, which is what they've done since the beginning of this crisis. They have remained loyal to a regime which treated them very well for 30 years. The Egyptian military is not interested in democratic reform. It's interested in stability. It just doesn't want to pay too high a price for that stability. So it doesn't want to ruin its reputation by using violence against the protesters, and it doesn't want to tear its relationship with the U.S. military, which would cost it about a third of its defense budget. So if the protesters remain out in the streets, the Egyptian military has some very tough choices to make. And, and Chip, is the White House bracing for the worst tomorrow? Well, certainly the lights will be burning brightly here late into the night to see if there's anything they can do. But, you know, Katie, there's not a lot they can do other than simply repeat their call for both sides to refrain from violence. All right. Chip Reed at the White House, David Martin at the Pentagon tonight. Gentlemen, thank you both. And Updating our top story, the crisis in Egypt. Another huge protest rally is planned for tomorrow. Organizers are calling it a day of martyrs for the more than 300 people who have died in the past 17 days of demonstrations. Anger is growing in the streets after President Hosni Mubarak refused again tonight to step down before the September election. But in a televised speech, he said he is giving up his presidential power. I decided to transfer my powers to the vice president as per the stipulation of the Constitution. That was not enough to satisfy the protesters in Tahrir Square, and their demonstration will continue into an 18th day.